Welcome today to Your Revit Guy content, and today we're going to talk about, hey, can you keep it down up there? Hey man, I'm just trying to relax up here on the roof. Sorry about that. Today we're going to be talking about roofs in the Revit software and the ability to stack material on top of each other, making different roof types with different materials and thicknesses that add up to the total thickness of the structure of the roof as well as membranes, topping, and roof structure. Let's take a look at it together. On the left side you can see a number of completed roof designs that were generated beforehand. If we look at that in a 3D view, you can see that each of those have different roof connections and conditions. We'll create the majority of these over here. So these are all just one level wall outlines that will add a roof on top of each one at level two height. Go to the architecture tab, build panel, roof drop down list, and choose roof by footprint. It will always ask you which level you want to associate the roof height with. You'll choose the most appropriate level height. So I'm going to choose level two, click yes. And then it opens up your modified create roof by footprint tab where you have all of your normal draw tools and you'll use boundary line outlines to generate the roof profile. You also have a slope arrow that you can use to generate other conditions that we'll look at. I'm going to use the rectangle tool at this point and then go into the options bar below and you have choices for defined slope, which is a checkbox on and off, an offset distance, and a radial angle at each in the properties drop down list. I have a couple of options in this project for different choices. We'll look at the design of that in a moment. I'm going to leave it as this 12 inch thickness and the base level height is currently level two and I'm going to set a base offset from level actually to negative two feet. I'll show you what that means in a moment. Then I'm going to come over to this roof condition and then draw a rectangle from corner to corner and then click the green check mark to finish and tilt up 3D. So what that does is it creates a flat roof condition and because I've inset the roof inside of the walls and dropped it below the wall height. It's creating a parapet condition where the roof is lower and the walls extrude up above that, creating a parapet height above that condition. So this is a very useful roof type, primarily for commercial and industrial uh, conditions. The next roof types we look at are usually more affiliated with single family and multifamily residential condition, but any types can be used in any location depending on your design need. Next, we'll look at this hipped roof design, which is just a four-way hipped roof condition where all of these slopes are the exact same size. Top down view, back to the roof tool and choose roof by footprint, level two. I'm gonna change the roof properties to a wood rafter eight inch on asphalt shingle insulated design and the, side, the height of the roof keep it level two with an offset of zero. Then in the draw panel, I'm gonna use a different tool, which is called the pick walls tool. If you already have walls designed when you're creating roofs, this is usually a good method to do so, pick walls tool. And in the options bar, you have a choice where it says define slope. We're gonna turn that on now. And then you also have an overhang number. And that is different only when you're using the pick walls tool. If I switch to any other tool, such as the pick line tool, notice that it now says offset. All of the other tools also say offset unless you're using the pick wall tool. It makes sense of why it's doing it, but it's confusing that it just changes the naming condition in this one tool only because attached to the wall. What this is actually doing is as you use the pick wall tool and you pick the wall, it's gonna create an overhang of the roof, which is still just an offset away from the line that you're selecting. So the difference between offset and overhang is very minuscule. It's just a difference between the offset distance for the edge of the roof compared to the line that you're selecting. In this case at the wall. So I'm going to left click and place that on all four sides and those joined together at all four corners. And you'll notice that each sketch line also includes a little triangle symbol, which is a traditional slope angle definition. When I click on that, it says nine inches over 12 inches. That's the rise and run ratio of the roof slope. So it's a nine and 12 pitch on the sketch line. And it's actually the same in all four of these. So they're all nine and 12 pitch slopes. You can change each one. We'll look at that in a minute. You can also see that slope in the properties where you can adjust it as well. And you can also see the overhang and a few other properties that you can adjust. At all times when you're using the roof creation tool, you must finish by using the green checkbox to click on that. And then when I tilt up, now a four-way pitched roof and I'm using asphalt shingles, so it gives you that uh, shingled texture design. And each one of those slopes are in the same condition all the way around. After you generate the roof, when you select it, you actually do get a grip where you can move this grip up and down. You're actually changing the roof slope as you do so. 
a look at the properties of the roof now, it says, it's not showing me right now, but if I double click on the roof to edit the roof again, you'll now see that the roof slope says five and a half inch by 12 inch pitch. 9 and 12, 5 and a half inch by 12, and 9 and 12. So as you're moving that grip, the roof slope is actually changing, making them even, at least on the same sides. Next, we'll look at a mansard roof, which is a roof on top of another roof that have different height conditions. And it involves a little bit more uh, complexity, so we'll look at that. Starting the roof tool again. Again, level two height. I'm gonna use a rectangle tool with an offset of one foot now. Again, that is pretty much the same option as using the overhang of one foot by picking the walls. Again, each one of these roof sketch lines are defined as a 9 12 pitch slope. Now I'm going to use a, another rectangle tool with an offset of 8 feet, and I'm going to pick that along the interior face of the roof by hitting the space bar to flip it towards the interior side. And I'm actually gonna remove the sloping pitch for each of the interior sketch lines. So there should be a hole or opening within that roof design at the top. When I click on that and tilt up, the roof will actually show an opening or a hole in that space. And we'll add another roof location on top of that. But as you'll see, it's kind of difficult to set the height correctly. Choose roof again, again to level two, roof pitch within that same opening of the rectangle and then click the green check mark to finish and tilt up. And as you can see, the roof inside of the other roof is actually lower than the uh, one next to it. So we need to adjust that. And one way to do so is to change the base height so that it's actually above the roof so we can select it more easily. So I'm gonna set that to 10 feet. Now that I can see the edge of the roof, I'm gonna use the align tool under the modify tab, modify panel, align tool, AL is a shortcut key for that. And I use that by hovering over this lower roof section, and I need to hit the tab key a number of times until I get only a single line for the top line of the upper roof section for the start of the alignment. Left click, and then do the same thing with the upper roof above, making sure to select the top line of the, again, make sure I get a single line there, and left click, and then it joins those two roof segments together. Right now, they both actually have the same slope so they're exactly the same height condition but what i can do is change the slope of this so it changes the ratio between them and it gives you that difference in the roof height so that you can adjust them individually in some cases you may actually need to realign outline but some of the compound roof conditions do require some additional roof design included it does not have very complex tools that will let you create very complex roof conditions without some extra modifications of the roof design. Next, we'll create a single shed roof, which is just a one-dimensional roof slope going from one side to the other, which you can do in either in two methods, actually. I'll show you both. Again, rectangle, offset of one foot from the outside. Make sure that all of the sketch lines are actually not defining a slope, and then pick one of them, and then set that to define slope and I can change that slope to, I'm gonna go with a two and 12 pitch, so it's not too extreme, and then click the green check mark to finish and tilt up. And you can see that that roof is now sloping up to that point. What you'll also notice is that the walls are lower than that position. The walls do not automatically align themselves to the roof unless you tell them to. The way to do that is you have to select each wall segment Picking that wall, if I use the drag symbol and drag it above that roof layer, it does not automatically cut the wall off where it meets the roof. Instead, you must use a different tool. Select the wall first, go to the Modify tab and choose the Modify Wall Panel where you see Attach, Top, or Base. Select that option and then choose the roof and it will bring that wall up to meet that position. You must do that with each wall section to the same roof. So choose more, more than one wall if you need to, and then attach that wall to the roof. Now, each of those walls are attached to that same roof height. What's also nice about this is I can change the roof slope and the walls will automatically conform to that roof height because they're attached at those positions. I'm gonna edit the footprint of the roof again, go back to a top-down view. I'm gonna select this sketch line and remove the option where it says define slope. So now it would actually equal a flat roof if I finish this. But I wanna continue, so I'm gonna edit the roof again. And going to the Modify tab, Draw Panel, I'm gonna choose the Slope Arrow option. 
and then I draw an arrow of either a straight line or a pick line. That's your only two choices. I'm going to draw a line all the way across the roof from one side to the other. And then I pick the, the arrow, and in the properties I see some information. It says height offset at tail end is 0 feet, and height offset at head end is currently 10 feet. I'm going to change that to 4 feet tall. So that sets the incline slope of that roof from one end to the other. So it's going to start at 0 feet and go up to 4 feet total at the top. Click the green check mark to finish and tilt up. And I can clearly see how that roof is sloping up to that point. So that means that this top left height is at four feet above level two. And this portion down here is at zero feet from level two. So that's how that roof height is set. To discuss this further, I'm gonna first go into this model and I'm gonna set a option in the floor plan and go to the architecture tab, work plane panel and choose reference plane. And then I'll draw a reference plane along the front face of this wall here. And I can left click on the line and actually name this line, giving it a parameter name called wall face. Going up to the work plane panel once more, I turn on this show option where it says show work plane. And it turns on this blue background showing where the work plane is currently. As I zoom in here, I can see that that work plane is actually on the top of footing level and I'm actually going to apply a roof by extrusion on the face of this wall. So I needed to tell Revit which surface I want to work on. To do that, I go back to the work plane panel and I choose set work plane, and which opens a dialog box that says current work plane equals level top of footing. So that was correct. And I can go to the specify a new work, work plane option and go to the named section where I have a drop down list with different options. I can choose any grid line any level or any reference plane. I have that wall face reference plane I just created. I'm going to choose the wall face reference plane, click OK, and that changes the orientation of the work plane to now be a vertical surface along the face of that wall. And as I orbit around the building, I can clearly see that that face is on the surface of that wall. I can actually contract that blue area again as I zoom in and move around it's clearly on the face of that wall. The blue area is not actually the extent of the plane, it's just a representation of the surface they're working on. That, that surface plane actually goes on to infinity in all four directions. It's just representing where it is currently. And I'm gonna go back to the work plane panel and turn off the show option. Then I will use the roof by extrusion tool by going to a front on face view, architecture tab, build panel, roof drop down list, and now choose roof by extrusion instead of by footprint. Then it asks you what level you wanna associate that with. I have more levels here, so I'm gonna choose this parapet level height with zero offset and click okay to continue. And in the draw panel, you have all of your normal draw tools. I'm going to use an arced line and draw an arc from, and actually this is the one of the rare instances in Revit where you do not want to create a closed looped condition within the sketch. This is going to define the profile of the roof by extrusion that you're creating. So this is the extent of what you want the roof to be. And before I finish this, go to the properties window and I can choose the extrusion start and extrusion end. And from experience, I want to set that to five foot start condition and negative five foot and click the green check mark to finish. And as I tilt up, I can see the roof is now extruded outside of the building five feet and then into the building five feet from the face of the wall. What you'll also notice is there's a portion of the roof that is entering the building here. This could be going into a habitable space. That's not something that you want where typically the roof is just surfaced on the face of the wall as an attachment. To keep that from happening, when I click on the roof, there's an option in the Modify tab that is called Openings Vertical Opening. So I will apply a vertical opening to that roof, which will cut off a portion of that roof. Before I do so, I need to change the work plan again, because if I try that now, and choose vertical surface, it gives me an error that says cannot use work plane because it's not a level. So I need to cancel that, go back to the work plane panel and choose set work plane. And choosing the name drop down list, I will change that back to any of the level heights. It actually doesn't matter. It just has to be a flat surface. So I'll choose level one. And once again, if you choose show, it's gonna be on a flat horizontal plane. 
Then I go to a top-down view, select that roof extrusion again, and I see modify roofs, vertical opening. I choose that vertical opening tool. I'll draw a rectangle from the edge of the wall where the roof enters the building, covering over the roof area where it exists right now, and then left click, and then click the green checkbox to finish. And when I tilt up, you can see what's happened is that the roof has now been cut off where it enters, so it no longer extends into the wall, it gets cut off as it attaches to the exterior wall. It does not extend further. You have grips that you can use to extend the wall out from the building further. That can go on indefinitely as long as it's structurally sound. And if you move it into the building further, eventually it's going to go beyond where you place that vertical opening cut. So it's going to exceed that if you pull it further and it's going to extend beyond where that opening is located. So it's actually just created a cut within that surface that you would need to it. So as long as you don't exceed that, it's going to cut the roof out where it enters the building and it will wrap around the wall this way if that's necessary for your design. You can create as many of these different conditions as you want. You can also change and edit the profile of the roof at any time to be different designs. And you can change that as many times as you want to, creating some very complex conditions. We'll be employing the same situation with these walls to create this type of roof condition. Coming over here, I'm going to select this wall surface and actually isolate those walls by going to temporary hide and isolate and isolating elements. I'm going to set the work plane. You have another option within the work plane panel. Instead of choosing a named work plane, you can choose pick a plane. Click on that and choose OK and it lets you pick a surface. I'm going to pick the surface of this wall here. That becomes the new work plane. So when I click show, it is clearly on that surface. Then I'll go to a straight on view and I'll now choose the roof by extrusion set to level two height and I'm going to draw an arc from one side to the other at some radius and then click the green checkbox to finish. And I note that it extends into the building slightly without an overhang so I can actually select that. And I could offset that slightly or you can extend the edge of the sketch line out further. But I'm actually gonna offset that to the outside and tilt back up. I can see that the roof extrusion was created there. So I wanna go to a top down view and then change the extent of this to the end of the wall and a little bit more. I could be more precise about this, but not for example is not necessary. So now when I tilt up or look around, it looks like a barrel vault roof. Again, all of the walls are not automatically conditioning to the height of the roof. So I'm going to select all four walls and attach to roof, picking those and now they're matched up to that height. Roof is extended over that wall will they be attached? Otherwise they'll drop down. Next, I'll select this section of walls and isolate those and set the work plane onto this surface, a straight on view by extrusion level two. I'm also going to create some sketch lines in this. So I'll start in the very center line of this roof, or actually this wall, go about 10 feet. And I'll come over at some angle and then back down at another angle. And I'll extend slightly over more. And then I mirror this to the other side. So it creates a mandrel roof condition. I delete the center line, again, a single sketch line following this whole profile. Click the green checkbox to finish, tilt up to the top, and then use the extension to stretch the roof from one side to the other and creates that roof type here. Kind of a barn roof or again, you still have to select the walls at all times and attach them to the roof. And you can always edit the sketch of the roof by selecting the roof and edit profile you can change the roof's profile design and the walls will automatically follow that profile as more of a church or steeple type roof design. You can even make it inverted if you wish. You can make as many contoured conditions within that roof. A couple of ways to do that as well. Always have to remember to set your work plane back to a horizontal plane surface as you've changed it for other purposes. Roof by footprint. And I'll create a gable end on the front and back sides and on the left and right side, I'll change those to something different. So 6 and 12 on one side, 9 and 12 on the other. Click the green check mark to finish and tilt up and it looks something like this. So it's two way pitched roof where you have gable ends on both sides. So that's one method of doing this. And of course you can still select the roof and then change the height of the roof as well. 
Another one is to select the roof again, delete all of the slope design, and then using slope arrows, you can actually employ more than one sloping arrow from one side to the other, where you have one side that is set up to, let's go with four feet on this side, and then up to eight feet on the other side. And it will match up those roofs wherever that peak needs to exist, looking something like this. Even though that I move the arrows beyond where that peak is located, the height of the head end is going to dictate where the peak of that roof is controlled by the location of the arrows. It will extend indefinitely until it meets that appropriate height. Next, I'll create this connected valleyed roof condition where you have two roofs side by side and you can actually join them together even though they were created separately. Again, that would be the standard roof layout design. Here. And on the back side, I'm going to turn off the slope so that it becomes a gable end on this side, and all the other three sides indicate a roof slope. And I can even change the slope to 6 and 12. So right now, I have a lower roof design and a larger roof in the back. How do I join these roofs together? There's nothing to extend that as a grip or anything. Going back to the Modify tab, Geometry Panel, Join Unjoin Roof Tool, select that. Choose the back side of the smaller roof gable end, and then the larger edge of the roof face that you want to extend it to, and it will join those together to meet them, creating a natural valley between those two roofs. This is the best way to create two roof connections. It does, in fact, create a overframed roof condition. You could use the vertical opening condition to cut out the inside of that roof, but that is a way to create the roof conditions between the connections. Another type of design we'll look at is this multi-part roof condition where you have a bunch of different roofed scenarios and they're all joined together as a single roof condition, creating all of these complex contoured roof slopes that are usually difficult to create in other softwares. The same layout, roof by footprint. I'll use the pick wall tool once more with a one foot overhang and then selecting each wall face. Creates a sloped offset the outside and click the green checkbox to finish and it creates all of those roofs designed together where they are evened up and each of the peaks are aligned perfectly there may be some additional design changes that are necessary you can even change the individual slopes separately some of them have different peaks that you can adjust you cannot move the adjustments of the peaks where they exceed the slope height of another adjacent intersection. If it gives you an error, it may attempt to delete or remove the roof completely if it can't create it, but it gives you a lot of control over adjusting complexity of that roof design. Even something more complex, such as creating a arced condition, is capable as well. So if I have an arc here to there, and you can actually get curved roof conditions in here, provided all of the Adjacent roof slopes are allowing that curve to exist. You cannot exceed the geometry that's available, but Rebel will al allow you to create complex geometry as long as it can create it. The last area we will touch on is adding a parapet roof condition to this building and then adding a contour roof design, which are slopes for drainage. To a top down view, again, choose roof by footprint, draw panel using the pick walls tool set the base height to the roof level and make sure that you have no defined slope turned on since this is a flat roof condition and when you pick the wall make sure that it's going to the inside of the wall you can use this flip tool to flip it from inside to outside that now gives you a currently flat roof design with a parapet wall above that then select the roof itself and you'll go to the Modify Roofs tab and you have a shape editing panel where you have the ability to add points, split lines, and then modify sub-elements. Choosing the modify sub-elements will turn a separate sub-condition on where it turns all of the content behind where you've selected into a grayed out mode. And the roof that I've just selected now has a green dashed outline with green nodes at each vertex corner. Go to a top-down view and I want to add split lines to various points and add individual points in the center of each section. And with each point and each line, you can actually change the elevation height for them. I'm going to change that relative to the current level 
five, so that's dropping it down four inches to create a roof drain slope four inches down for each peak. And then once you finish that, it will have created all of those three-dimensional contours for you. Now, after all of the contours are created, you can select the roof. And again, all of these slopes for the roof have been depressed along each section. The higher portions of the roof will become a cricket, and then the lower portions will become a portion for drainage. Next, we're gonna talk more about roof materials, selecting this roof here. Looking at the properties, there are a couple of options in the drop-down list, and then we'll go to the edit type properties. The most important part about the type properties for the roof is the structure and choosing edit. We'll open up the edit assembly dialog box. In the lower left-hand corner, choose preview, and you can preview this roof in a section. On the right-hand side are all of the materials that make up this roof's construction. Layer one is a finished layer of asphalt shingle material of quarter inch thickness. Then there is a substrate layer of plywood sheathing of 5 8 inch thick. Then there is a structural, structural wood joist raptor of seven and a half inches that you can define here. You can move the materials up and down the list so I can move the rafter to the outside of the roof condition. The structural portion of the materials should always exist within this core boundary layer between currently layers two and five. You can also insert new layers as needed. You can delete layers and you can change their function from structure, substrate, thermal air layer, finish, or membrane layer. You can change the thickness to any thickness type that you want. You can also change the material. Choosing material, click this dot, 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 opens up the Revit Materials browser, and you have a very extensive list of materials that you can choose from. You can search for different materials. You can search for something like, say, concrete, and you have concrete cast in place, precast concrete, and at the bottom, you also have this materials library that you can expand up and you have another section called AEC materials. These materials are not currently loaded into your project, but are available to load from a pre-existing library of materials that get installed with the Revit software. So from here, you can choose different types of materials such as terrazzo flooring. And if you like this material and you want to use it in your project, selecting that row and then choose this up arrow adds the material to your document. Then you can choose to use this material within any surface that you want, including walls, floors, roofs, and ceilings, creating different layers of structure, building up those material thicknesses as needed. The layer thicknesses, again, all add up to a total thickness height of currently eight foot three and an eighth, sorry, eight and three eighths inches is the total thickness of this uh, roof height. The top of the roof is the top of the roof height as according to the level height in the bottom of the roof just lists underneath that at whatever the depth is set to. You can actually see this material when you go into an elevation or a section view. So if I go into a elevation view, this is a side elevation view of that roof on a building. So you can see the bottom of the rafter, the plywood sheathing and the asphalt shingles on top of that. If you cut a section through that roof, you can see the same thing. So it actually does impart information into the materials that you're building for. And if you run a material takeoff, you can get accurate information of where all of the materials and square footage of these materials are existing. That also occurs within the wall construction. Finally, we will look at adding additional features on top of the existing roof areas, specifically on the edges, including a fascia and gutter. Go into the architecture tab, build panel, roof drop-down list, you have roof soffit, roof fascia, and roof gutter. I'm gonna choose roof fascia initially. And then from the drop-down list, I have fascias of different sizes. I'm gonna choose a one by six flat fascia and then come over to this roof area and then click the top portion of the roof and it places that fascia along that surface. Now the length or the height of the fascia will be dictated by the type of profile that you're using on that fascia. In this case, a one by six. And simply selecting that material, you can use different drop-down list options. I can change it to a one by eight one by 12, depending on what your needs are. Those can also have a material type applied to it. Right now I'm using a clad white material. I can change that to any material I want, including carpet or concrete. It just depends on what you want to use that for. Again, you can add the materials from below as well. The profiles are loaded from this area. You can load additional profiles from the Revit Families Library 
and you can define your own custom profile families. In addition, you can also add a gutter to the surface. This is a five inch by five inch gutter profile. Edit type, this also uses a gutter profile separate. You have all these different other sizes to choose from as well. I'm gonna change the material. And just like with the fascia, you apply this by selecting the top of the fascia and it adds the extrusion of the gutter around each face. Very quickly adding an entire gutter system onto your roof construction. Lastly, we'll look at the soffit design. And to do that, I'm also going to use a hidden line view so I can see through to the wall locations. That will help me design the fascia locations. Roof drop down list and choose roof, sorry, roof soffit, not fascia. And I'll associate that with level two. And you can choose your fascia thickness, sorry, soffit thickness. Also choose a white clad for that. And with this one, you actually build the extent in a plan view orientation of where you want the soffit to exist. Use the pick line tool, sorry, the pick wall tool, and find a one foot offset. And then remove the one foot offset and also apply another face along the surface of the wall. drawing an interior line to define the other side of the soffit as well. <laughs> this from the underside, you can see that it creates an underside soffit. That is the material that was just created along with the roof extension and overhang where it meets the wall to complete that box connection. Thank you for joining us for this session of Your Revit Guy content, where we talk about roofs in the Revit software and help you to stay on top of the competition. This channel is sponsored by Imaginate Technologies. With over 20 years of experience and more than 100 industry experts, Imaginate is well equipped to assist with any needs for software, training, implementation, including Productivity Now, a video training resource for many types of industry leading software. Check out the available licensing packages at Imaginate.com. Contact Imaginate today and mention this channel to get a special offer. Check out our previous videos below. Comment below and tell us more information you'd like to see covered in the Revit software.